What is up, my new Vim friends? Today, we're going to be talking about hop.invim, and we're going to compare it against flash.invim, which I would say is our reigning champ for the different jumping plugins. So we're going to compare that, see what it has to offer. There's been a lot of people commenting about how great it is. Let's figure out what they love and if it's better than flash.invim. One of the first things that I realized is there's two different repos. So there's the original repo, which is from Hadronized, which I'm probably gonna say both of these wrong, so forgive me, but Hadronized is the original one. And then the new fork, which you should use, is from Smoka7. So use that one, make sure you're downloading that plugin because that is the one that is being maintained today. From the GitHub page, basically Hop is an easy motion-like plugin. So you can jump anywhere with a few keystrokes. Basically between one and three characters can get you to anywhere. There's a bunch of different commands and ways to customize this plugin, and I'll show you how to do that in this video. Let's get started by installing our hop.invim plugin. If you haven't seen some of my videos before, I use lazy.invim. It's the thing you should be using. It's amazing. It's maintained by Folky, which again, if you don't know him, then you got some work to do. How you install it is you add it to your plugins, either in an individual file or in a large Lua table. And so this first one, which is this guy. We can install it with this, give it a version, the ops and keys you can customize to be whatever different keys. This is for the jump characters so that you can know where to actually jump. If you want a smaller subset or you want different characters, this is how you can customize it. But this is straight out of GitHub. This is the default. So start with this and then you can tweak it a little bit. Whenever I installed it, I saw that there was a couple of report start deprecation warnings, but it seemed like everything was all right. So install this, restart NeoVim, and then you can have hop.invim and we can get started into how you use this plugin. As always, if you don't know about the check health command, then you can run this and this will give you some nice understanding of how the plugin gets installed and if there's any problems. If you have which key installed, then this will tell you whenever there's overlaps in the different key bindings. For hop.invim, surprise, maybe spoiler alert, there are no defaults. So I'll show you how to get those set up and how we can start using it. Like I mentioned before, there are no default key maps and you will have to set up things yourself. Or the other way is to use the various commands, which there are a lot of them and there's a lot of different command variations that I will get into and show you how to use all the different options here. This is very deep, and I think this is probably one of the reasons why so many people enjoy this plugin is because you can really make it your own and customize it, and the options are almost endless in how you can combine these different commands. Not only are there the commands that are exported, but you can also use a Lua API, which I'll show a little bit later in the video. So we're going to start by going through all the different commands. You can check out the GitHub page. There's a nice wiki document where it lists all the commands, so you can kind of get some explainer text on what's going on. I typically have a companion article that I do with most videos. So check that out too if you want to see this in written form and a little bit more words and read through this. The other way that you can get an understanding of all the commands is by using the help and then hop commands. And this will bring up the NeoVim help explainers. And then you can understand again how many commands are in here. So check that out. It's very well documented. Let's get into the very first command here and it's gonna be hop anywhere. So for this one, if we type hop anywhere, you can see how much text is on the page here. Basically, this gives you a jump character for literally everything on the screen. Like it says in the description, you can hop anywhere. I would say that this is not as helpful because it's a little bit wordy or a little bit overwhelming to actually know where you're gonna hop next. Like I don't even know what words are underneath all these things. So if I hit in, and then I can see at the bottom there, I can do E and I'm jumping down to that character so I can hop anywhere, but I would not recommend this is the command that you map to your key bindings. One of the commands that I would recommend that you map to your key bindings is hop word. And so if you do hop word, then you can see we don't have as many characters that we're overwhelmed with. And you can see the highlighting is a little bit different. And the ones that require two characters to jump have a more bold character in the front and then a second character. So if we wanted to jump to a Y, like on the bottom of that paragraph, we would hit a, and then you can see that it highlights that in red and we would jump to Y and then we're there. You can use this in combination with a bunch of Vim motions, which I'll show a little bit later, 
but you can do like V to get into visual mode and highlight something or C to change to that location. The next command here is hop camel case. And this one is gonna be really useful if you program in a language that uses a lot of camel case stuff. So like maybe a Java or some Kotlin or some of those folks. So if you do hop camel case, then you can see that our highlighting is similar to what we had just seen. And if we went to like RU, then we can go to a different you know, jump location, just like we had. And if you see that the hop camel case, the characters that we can jump by hitting a single key command are highlighted in red. Next up is the hop character one command, which is different from the hop character two. So if we try to hop to a single character, if let's say we wanna to jump to easy motion, so the capital E, it will just jump there right away. It won't have us prompt. If we go back to the front here and we do again, hop character one, and we try to jump to something with an S in it, there's a lot of those. And you can see that we can jump right away. So maybe we want to jump to that S or if we wanted to jump to the bottom S with keystrokes where there's many of them, then we would do in E and we would jump down there. So if it can match with one character, it lets you do that right away without prompting you. If there's many options, then you're going to have to hit a couple of keystrokes. In using the hop character one command, we can see that there's different highlighting. So if we look at this and we try to hop to keystroke, then in this bottom section at the bottom of the paragraph, we can see that there's an N and an E that's a little bit dimmer. And we need to type both of those to be able to jump there. If you like to have this kind of highlighting, then I'm using Tokyo Night, which is a really robust color scheme. If you want to override this, then you can actually set your color scheme to be different. Back over here in my NeoVim config, you can see that I've set up a auto command for color scheme, and then you just need to set the hop next key and key one, and that will set both jump characters to be the same level of color, and you can just see which characters you need to press every time. I've restarted NeoVim, and if we try to do that same thing, so hop character one, then we try to do keystrokes, we can see that there's not a dimming effect. Everything is the same color, I control all of that, and we can type in E and jump to keystrokes. If you like seeing the colors in NeoVim like this, where you can have the hashtag and then everything afterwards, I'm using InVim highlight colors, and I'll put a link to that in the description if you also wanna see that in your config. Like I mentioned earlier, there is also the hop character two command, and that one will prompt you for two characters before it tries to match. So if we wanted to do something with document, then we have a couple of different matches, we can jump to O and it'll take us there right away. Our next command is really similar to what we've seen in flash.invim. So if we do hop pattern, then we can hop to a different kind of pattern. And so if we did like ST, then we can see these different characters that are matching. If we hit enter, then we know we can jump to one of these specific ones. So we can hit X and jump to keystrokes down there. Hop line or hop line start is what you can use for jumping to the start of a line. So you can see hop line will jump anywhere. So we can hit O. If we do hop line start, then this will be a different selection. So the previous one had every line. This one only has lines with characters in the front. So we can jump to a smaller subset and see fewer jump characters if we use one or the other. Hop vertical is also another one that does some line jumping and tries to keep your cursor in the same position. So if we did hop vertical, then we can see we can jump down a few characters to P and see that. I don't know that I'd personally do this. Uh, maybe using like 3J or 3K would be a better option, but hey, this is an option. All right, now we're getting into some of the yanking and pasting commands. So if we do pop paste character one, then we can paste in a different section. And I have copied hop, that word that I'm on right now. And if we wanted to paste it in a different spot, we can do capital P and we have two different areas we could paste it in. I could do it in the bottom one with T and it gets pasted right there and I'm not moving my cursor whenever that happens. All right, now if we wanted to yank some text and not move our cursor, we can use hop yank character one. And this one, you can see I get prompted for a start pattern. So if we wanted to yank one of these yank here lines, we could give it Y and let's say we wanted to do E, 
Now, I don't get another prompt here, but it's asking me for an end pattern. So I want to yank the end part where it's here. And so in E, and that will yank the whole text. And if I do a capital P, then I can see that I have that in my buffer and I can paste it. And I don't have to move my cursor. One of the last commands I'm going over is hop nodes, which lets you jump to different tree sitter nodes. I'll show you this in this text document and then also in our NeoVim config so that you can see some code blocks and how that works. But these different tree sitter nodes get highlighted whenever you use hop nodes. And so if we do hop nodes, then we can see we have a couple of matches and we can go over here to T. Let's go over to our NeoVim config. And if we do hop nodes, then we have a few more options here and we can go to Q and see the different tree sitter nodes that are being highlighted. The functionality with hop nodes is not actually my favorite. I actually prefer how flash.invim highlights things for you and you don't have to go into a different mode, you just get it for free. But with hop nodes, if you do V for visual mode and then I have it mapped to capital S, then you can see that I can jump to these different locations and go Y, but this only goes from my cursor position to that other position. And so in my opinion, it doesn't quite fit the need of highlighting the whole node and getting where I need to go. Now that we've covered all the different commands, there's even more command variations like I mentioned earlier in the video. Basically, this is adapting or constraining how the different commands work to be either by line, by before or after the cursor, or across different visual splits. So for me, an example of that is this hop word MW, and this is to do multiples. So if I did a split, and then I had some other file opened, so like maybe this one. Then if I do my key command, so S is gonna let me trigger that hop words. And you can see that I have different ways I can jump. So if I do SO, then I'm jumping to the left. And if I do RL, then I'm jumping to the right. There's several different variations. And so if you wanna do before the cursor, it's BC. So hop, whatever it is, like hop words or hop line or something like that. Maybe hop line's not a great example, but you get the idea, like anything hop and then whatever the command is, either before or after cursor is BC or AC. And then if you wanna constrain it just to the current line, that in is current line. And then if you wanna do across visual buffers or visual splits, then it's MW. While there are a ton of different commands and command variations that you have access to, there's even more that you can do via the Lua API. And so if you wanna trigger something, then some of these are some examples, so you can do hint anywhere, hint character, hint character two, and all of these let you customize things in a lot of different ways. If you want some help on understanding all this and some more information, you can do help and hop Lua API, and this will bring up all the docs for different ways that you can customize things. There are a few examples that are actually on the GitHub page, and this will show you how to, you can just add this to your config, then this will give you a way to see how that Lua API works. And what this is doing is, is extending the FT and capital F and capital T commands so that you have multiple hints. So if I had multiple matches, so if I hit F and I did D, then you can see I have multiple matches here where I can jump and I can do a jump right to the one that I need to. If there's only one match, then it'll jump you right to there and won't give you a hint. So if I did capital B, it jumps right there. If this is still not enough customization for you, you can actually create your own hop commands using the Lua API, or you can use the hop extensions, which I'm not gonna go into, I have not, I'm not dove into this, but you can use this hop extension and read into this and understand some more options. So dive into this if you really wanna see more things. If you're diving more into hop.invim, I really understand why people really love this plugin. The amount of customization is incredible and you can really adapt this plugin to whatever you want your workflow to be. You can extend it with hop extensions or create your own custom Lua API config or commands. I really like the F and T for doing multiple matches and hints. This is really cool and I'm, I'm gonna see if I can bring this into Flash. Hop word seems really good and I really like the matching that it does. There isn't really a ton of difference for me in the different hop camel case, hop character one, hop character two. Maybe you get away with typing less in hop character one, but I kind of prefer to use the hop word command. 
the amount of ways that you can configure and use Hop is both impressive and a little bit overwhelming. I think you could quickly get lost in the amount of customization, and maybe this is good for some people, but I feel like I would spend too much time trying to customize it. The thing I really didn't like how it worked was Hop nodes. I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I really want to see Hop nodes highlight already and me not have to do a visual mode and then try to select different nodes. I just want to select the whole node and do something with it. After trying out hop.invim for a while and exploring some of its features, I still think that I prefer flash.invim. I'm going to try different jump plugins like mini jump and we'll see if any of them can compare to flash. But at this point, I'm going to stick with flash because I really like typing characters to search and then jumping right to them. If you have some things with hop.invim or other plugins that you wanna share, definitely leave them in the comments below. I appreciate you watching. I'm really enjoying this series of evaluating the different jump plugins, and hopefully this is helpful for other people, and you can learn to tweak your config and get exactly what you want out of NeoVim. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.